guess what? It's almost seven o'clock in the morning. And yesterday, the sun rose at almost six o'clock in the morning. And that's just because we had it changed to summertime. So our clocks went forward an hour last night. If your country didn't change the clock, then it's no change for you because the sun keeps getting up more or less at the same time every day, two minutes earlier, a minute and a half earlier. The water is very calm. The water is always a reflection of the sky. Well, there's also the factor of wind that can stir up the water. But in terms of colors, it's that mirror effect that's making the difference. Some people went in a few minutes ago, so they missed the appearance of the sun. Those who persevered were here to get the pictures. We're entering into the high tensions, contextualizing Holy Week, probably the drama of history. But a drama that already was there it's really fascinating to see the Book of Wisdom text we have today. It's almost like a, a trailer, a historical trailer for the experience Jesus was having. But also in a way, it's really the experience that all people who are persecuted today have for their faith. And it can happen not only in these big scales, but also in the small scale of the family. If somebody is raising the bar morally or spiritually, that doesn't sit well with people who have gradually come into a status quo that's accepted by most everybody, that's not questioned, that's simply there and somebody that's being renewed spiritually becomes a thorn in the eye. That's an expression, isn't it? It's very eloquent, very dramatic to be a thorn in the eye. So here we have the Book of Wisdom, and that's very recent biblical literature at the time of the Roman period. <clears throat> it's coming out of Alexandria, the Jewish community there, pondering the history of God's intervention with his people and leaning so much understanding and wisdom in that pondering. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us be set the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He is a thorn in the eye. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of your, our training. He professes to have knowledge of God.
These are all going to open up with the sun. All these flowers. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. So there's another bit happening here as well that's very interesting. And that is this connection with God that the just person has actually totally needs and wouldn't be just without it. It would be impossible. Thus, to us he is as the censure of our thoughts, meaning to see him is a hardship for us. You remember the brothers and Joseph? Just to see him coming just got them angry. That's a family situation. It's good to ponder these stories also with children parents or grandparents with the children catechists so that they understand the the contours of human behavior and life and reactions the complexity of the human heart and to become alert to the pitfalls for our own thinking Because his life is not like that of others and different are his ways. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. So that segregation, that differentiation also becomes a value statement. Is that clear reflection? Isn't that amazing? It becomes a value statement of, about life, about behavior. And we do need to evaluate it. This is good behavior for doing well in your exams, good study behavior, attention in class. So these patterns work out in just a very normal day-to-day -day life, right at the family level, at the school level, at the playground level, at the brothers having their, their lunch, and this little brother comes along and there's just that hostility. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. And just listen to this text now and think of what happened with Jesus. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend and deliver him from the hand of his foes. You know that call, come down from the cross. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test. How was Jesus tested? Do not put us to the test. That's the second last prayer of the Our Father. It's the time of great trial. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. For according to his own words, God will take care of him. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. I'm walking along this ridge because the water is rising. And so I can't walk along there anymore. 
so soon I won't be able to come through here in the mornings. Maybe until next, who knows? Depends on how high the water will be this coming winter. We didn't have that much rain this year. So it was still viable to come through here. These were their thoughts, but they erred. And that's the book of wisdom. The ability to understand value, definitive value. Even if the big crowd goes along in a behavior that everybody applauds, the emperor's new clothes, they erred in their judgment. They did not know the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness nor discern the innocent soul's reward. I stayed with this today. There's a lot in the gospel, very intense polemic situation, but it's really just a full blown reenactment of this book of wisdom in the flesh, of concrete people. In the book of wisdom, it's abstract. The just man, the wicked man. But in the gospel story, the names are much more concrete. And the psalm verse, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Even the reflection of the head in the water is amazing. Of this cormorant. Now there's two more coming out after him. God bless you people. Have a blessed day today. See you later, alligators.